OK, Bruce. In fourth place, we have... On the big countdown, yeah. I can't, I can't mention the bubbling under the star. With the we'll go straight through, right? Yeah. <laughs> fourth place is the one that I've already backed anti-post and has drifted like a barge. Mm. And I don't know why. Tattenham uh, yeah. of Richard Rose sort of has always been targeted to the national. Sort of won me some nice money around Ascot uh, just before Christmas, which was nice. Yeah. And then ran behind Riverside Theatre in the uh, Grade One Ascot chase. Been a long way. Yes, yeah. I'd like to see him finish closer. And he didn't run up to form because he, he'd beaten I'm singing the blues before and finished behind him. But he's still, I think, you know, off a really nice lightweight in the national. He's always struck me as being a sort of national type horse. So I think he might just get my each way money in for okay. me. OK, what price do you get him at? I got him at, um, probably shouldn't say this, on the betting exchange, I think 160 to 1. I think he's now okay. 260 to 1. Really? OK. So, yeah, so that I might go and have another couple of quid. And, of course, the trip... Big imponderable? Yeah, again, big imponderable, but he's one of those ones, you, you look for horses that have a nice rhythm about jumping and just sort of like, you know, gallop, good strong galloper. Um, he fits the bill on all those fronts, I think. And uh, yeah, again, it needs to be good ground. With, you know, we're talking sort of about way ahead of the race at the moment. And yeah, good ground. He, he still will carry my money with hope, big hope. Front Tatterman, edging closer all the way to the line, pokes his nose down on the line and gives himself a great chance. Who's going to be third? Third in. Um, nearly made it to second, but gone in at third. His last year's winner of Baller Briggs. Mm -hmm. I think a big fan of the sort of course form and everything else like that. Uh, the time was really good last year. Again, so given similar conditions and the way the handicap has reacted, I can't see how he can finish out the first four again. And I don't think he'll be quite good enough because there's some lurking in there to quite repeat it, but you know, with the family tradition, everything else like that, everything going big for him. Was delighted with his sort of run back, I think, Donald was. So um, yeah, it's got to be in the first three. So you don't think it's going to be the weight that stops him this time then? You no, think, I don't. I don't think that's the weight. fair rise, do you? Yeah, I think it's a perfectly fair rise. I think uh, 10 pounds higher, the way he won last year. Yeah, I think it will just stop him winning it, but he's mm. still going to be a contender crossing the Melling Road for the last time. Who have you got filling the runner-up berth? Yeah, sticking close to home and sort of where the winnings have been um, found before. Calgary Bay, who does a good turn in the Sky Bet chase. One of your favourites. Another horse, that, yeah, I mean, it's sort of another horse I, I, I really love. Um, he, he's been there before, mm. didn't, didn't get around. Um, he was ridden... I thought a bit sort of strange there. He was up with the pace, you know, went, went along with the, you know, he was hunting with the hounds rather than sitting out the back. And I just think Dominic Ellsworth's got on really well with him this year. If he again, if he just drops him out again, sort of like at the start, like he did in the Sky Bet, sort of hunt round for the first circuit. I think, you know, if he gets into a rhythm like he can do, and I think he's jumped much better this year for Dominic, I think he's got to be a le leading player. He's, so he wasn't sort of murdered for the sort of Sky Bet chase. Um, I thought he won that really decently, I, although I hold my hands up saying off the home time, I thought he can't get there now, surely. Um, so, I mean, the further he goes, the four and a half of, 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 um, of entry is going to really suit him. Um, and again, the handicap, I don't think he's got a hold of him. Again, on good ground, sort of another big proviso, it's got to be good ground. Mm -hmm. um, I think he'd go very close. Calgary Bay from Shakalaka Boom Boom, who rallies gamely, but a week on from Summersby and the Victor Chandler chase. Now it's Calgary Bay's turn. Ellsworth seen to great effect again. Night reigns on town more, and Calgary Bay wins the sky bet. Uh, here we have a drum roll for your likely winner. I know the I know the answer to this. Do not adjust the sets. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Brucey, and it is. Um, last year's favourite. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, where did he finish? Yeah, okay, he got beaten, but yeah, the Midnight Club. Um, not sighted in the Gold Cup, but uh, Willie Mullins. Yeah, it's got a huge hand in the Grand National, and I know sort of like all the sort of vibes are. Yeah, Ruby Welsh going to ride Prince de Beauchesne, the anti-post favourite this year. But I have my doubts about Prince de Beauchesne, whereas the Midnight Club is a class act and didn't show it in the Gold Cup. But again, a lot of horses on the Thursday and Friday on that well-watered ground, I thought, you know, they, they, it is that sort of type of ground where some horses just hate it. And he got must, messed about early, didn't go sort of a yard in the ground. So you can forget that. You can forget that mm. form totally. And the last year... Those who backed him as favourite, I think, you know, probably feel a little bit aggrieved that it certainly they didn't get their place money back because he was you know, virtually brought to a halt mm. four out um, when still going all right, was creeping into it. Um, 
He's actually a couple of pounds lower this year. There's a lot of things going for him. And at the moment, 33s, sort of like I've, I've taken a little bit of that already because I think that's ridiculously overpriced, despite what happened at Cheltenham. He's a sort of forgotten horse this year. Um, and you know, up until he was brought to a standstill, he was staying on again when it was all over. So we know he goes around the track. And while all his winning form has been on firm, uh, sorry, on heavy ground, mm. the, the, the good fast ground last year held no fears from him at all. And I thought he was running his best race um, up until then. So give him one more chance. OK, well, 33s is uh, still available. But one thing he hasn't got this year is form. Last year he was going into the race in good form. That's why he was favourite, after all. This year, I mean, he's done nothing. No, I mean, like, you say nothing. Um, I know after he got beaten last time in Ireland, I mean, mm. Ruby immediately jumped off, said, didn't go a yard on that ground. It was heavy ground. Um, and OK, I know he's got previous form on it, but it's more the softer yielding that he's better on in Ireland. Um, and the form wasn't that bad. I mean, yeah, OK, he got beaten quite a long way, but he just never didn't, like, like, like in the Gold Cup, he never went a yard. And you, So underlying the fact that Willie was willing to let him run in the Gold Cup, mm. knows that he knows he's a class act. And we know that the National has now become, rather than the old lottery with all the changes to the track, that you want the class parks of park course form there. And he's got it in abundance. Mm. Although, as you say, yeah, it's a leap of faith after a couple of poor runs. But I forgive it on both both times of pillars of the ground. One, once in Ireland where it was bog deep and once at Cheltenham where it was very heavily watered. Um, and I've just struck a line through both of those, okay. which is why he's 33s. Otherwise, mm. he'd be a, probably a 10, 12 to 1 chance. Yeah. Obviously, with the first four like that, there's a, a lot of horses here who don't get a look in. And I'm just going to ask you very brief, briefly why that is. The favourite, Prince de Beauchesne? I don't think his form's up to the, up to the level. I think, you know, right. I think he's, he's, he's weighted right up to the hill. OK. Synchronised? Um, well, synchronised is like junior. I don't think they've got... I don't think they'll jump round. I don't think they'll... No, uh, but I, think neither, I think neither will get round. I yeah. think they both will be caught out by the fences. All right. Um, talking about Gold Cups, Burton Port, fourth in it. Yeah, and it's a strange one. I mean, like, all connections have said, like, he's not that big a horse, and obviously everyone goes, well, on Red Run wasn't very big, mm. and like, so I don't think he's that athletic either, Burton Port. So, yeah, like connections, I have my doubt. The Gold Cup was his main name of the year, yeah. and he ran a cracker in it. Yeah. And, yeah, in the old days, you say fourth in the Gold Cup wins the Grand National, all those old sort of adages, mm -hmm. sort of like, but for me, no, again, not, so again, one that I, I just don't think he'll get around either. Okay, though. fine. Sunny Hill Boy? Um, I think he'll be plodding on, but I just mm. don't think he's got quite the necessary class. No. Um, you know, really ground out at Cheltenham win, didn't he? Sort of, um, yeah, he's one that the four and a half miles is going to suit down to the ground. Um, yeah, six or seven for me. OK. Um, West End Rocker? Now, he's one that would... He's one of the ones I say would have been bubbling under yeah. if we if we have a, a week of really heavy rain yeah. at Aintree, which, I mean, you know, nature being nature, we've had such a dry run that there's possibility that it might suddenly pour down. If it did, he would come into my top four as okay. a late replacement for the soft ground. I think right. he's got a very good chance on that, but not if it's rattling good fast yeah, ground. fine. Just a couple more then. Cap of Blur being tipped up in a few quarters. Yeah, again, sort of, I can see the argument that he's, yeah, not badly handicapped, He's just had his problems over the mm -hmm. years, and he's one that I just still don't think has reached that level where you think he could be a Grand National winner. All right, uh, a couple more. Sea Bass. Yeah, we're talking about that. I mean, sort of, yeah. I think he owes his price in the race to being sort of Ted Walsh trained, possibly Ruby Walsh ridden. I mean, if Ruby gets something, he'll probably be our favourite, but obviously we, we reckon Prince yeah. de Beauchene, he's going to be on, isn't he? So, again, uh, for me, he, again, hasn't showed enough yet. Um, his form generally been over shorter. I know he's won point to points this, that and the other, and he's won his three this year. So, yeah, on paper it looks good, but underlying, I think this is, you know, as I've said, the Grand National is now is a class race. You know, it's not necessarily a grade three handicap. It's, you know, you need almost a grade one horse to win it. I'm, yeah. So I just don't, yeah, I can't have him. I'm intrigued by why he's running, because he could have gone to Cheltenham, presumably, after his last win. He's gone, what is it, seven on the trot now, £49. And he's, he's won over three miles a point to point, but only two miles six, I think, under rules. So I just, I just, I was surprised at the time when they said, right, we're going for the national now. Mm. That's, that's why I find him slightly intriguing for no, for no other reason. Yeah. Do you think he's the Irish hunt ball, do you? So, like, you know, hunt yeah, ball again be, going yeah, up. And be. everyone say, like, oh, what's sort of, you know, going to yeah. supplement him for the Gold Cup? What are you yeah. talking about? And then he goes and wins it. Yeah. So, yeah, he's, he's a similar sort of, yeah, he's, he's an improved handicapper. Sky could be the limit, 
But yeah, the could sort be of, a like story. I said, Katie sort of, Walsh could write it, maybe. Well, indeed, that's right. Mm. It could still be a Walsh family success, and it could be. Yeah. And we always look for the story, don't we, to yeah. win the national. So yeah, yeah. I know you've got the anti pose for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, moving on just quickly, Chicago Grey. Again, I just uh, don't think it's good enough to win. I think you know okay. probably will jump round, but not good enough to. Yeah, you know, again, probably will complete. Will be in one of my bets to get round. And one more. Uh, let's go for Killy Glenn, who won last time at Down Royal. Yeah, would have a chance again. It, talking of ones that you something know, well last year when he tipped up. Yeah, was indeed again. So like he, he again, I think on faster ground he's going to be a little bit of an Achilles heel. Um, and the one I'd just throw in finally is Lebeau by Chips. Oh, this yeah. obviously the Welsh national winner. Again, if there was more cut in the ground and it rained, he would suddenly be one that I'd be chucking into tricast and whatever. Because yeah. I think you know he's right down off a low weight. Again, with the rain. I think suddenly it goes from, are you looking at 11 stone plus horses, you're going to be going down to looking some of those lightweights in, in really, de you know, if it was, again, the Red Marauder year, mm. if it got soft, he's down there lurking off a low weight, goes in the mud, would suddenly come into contention like West End Rocker. So, okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, any of that I haven't mentioned, maybe, um, apart from the Bow Bay, or is that pretty much it? A uh, couple more Irish, I think, that you yeah. could mention, but I, you know, I think we've cut... You know, I narrowed the field down to 15 when I was doing it, and we've mentioned them all now. Yeah, good. OK, well, there you have it then. Bruce Jackson's one, two, three, four. You should really perm them in a tri-cast or something, and then you'd never have to work again.